I'm not a security expert, but that is why I love open source tools that help me achieve a high level of security without me needing to become an expert. When you're deploying apps or creating servers, and these are made available to the public on the internet, you are naturally going to be exposing your service to bad actors, even if you tell no one about it, even your best friend. That is why you need an extra layer of security and protection, which comes with using the open source project CrowdSec. I previously did a video on the open source tool CrowdSec that analyzes your logs as well as crowdsourcing bad actors then you can use a bouncer to block these attackers. I have linked this video in the description below if you want to take a look. Well, I have some exciting news. CrowdSec just released the biggest release since their version 1. So now the latest is version 1.5, which has many awesome new features. And I'm going to tell you about these today. For example, improved notifications, including alerts of tools like Slack. Replay logs from a specific date adding more context to your events, for example, user agent and region. Before going through CrowdSec's exciting new features, and if you are new to this awesome tool, let me briefly recap how to install CrowdSec. The installation takes about two minutes and you can do it with three simple steps. Pick the right package for you, and then step one will be running the curl command, and then step two will be updating your package manager, and step three will be installing it with the package manager of your choice. And then if you sign up to the free console on CrowdSec, you can actually see and analyze and understand the data being collected. Here from my dashboard, you can see the current CrowdSec servers that I've got connected. And the next step after you've installed it on your server would be to add it to your dashboard. And the way you do this is you click Add Security Engine, and it gives you the command that you should run. You can click Copy here, run it on your server, and then it will ask you the question on the page, do you want to add this to your console? And you click Yes, and then it will appear in the list here. As you can see, I've already got three, and I've got this 1.5 that I'm going to show you today. So these are the types of alerts that you will see on your dashboard on the CrowdSec console. And even if you don't tell anyone about the server, this is the type of things you'll get. For example, let me show you the latest one today. It is saying that it's type brute force, and someone's trying to log in with the SSH um, protocol. And we can see that these are the types of users they're trying to log in with, Albert, Rainbow, and Root. Root's obviously going to be the most popular one. It's great that CrowdSec is detecting these, and then the bouncer is going to be protecting our server. You also get more information about the, the source and where it's coming from, and you can definitely dive into that further. So now let's get on to some of my favorite features in 1.5 that CrowdSec has introduced. First, the new block list. The expert team at CrowdSec have specifically compiled a list of IPs that have been flagged. So in addition to the CrowdSec community block list you had before, you now can subscribe to additional two block lists in your free plan. Users are seeing almost a 200% increase in blocked IP addresses after implementing this new feature. Wow, that's impressive. This not only protects your servers and services, but also saves resources, increases efficiency, and keeps your server costs down. So how do we go about subscribing to these block lists? On the CrowdSec console, there is a new tab called Block List. Just click it, and here you'll see a list of lists. No, this isn't the movie Inception, but you know what I mean. Each item also has a label. For example, if there's been recent changes and many IPs, or there's also dynamic, and you can hover this to get more information. There are premium lists that use machine learning for classification, but for me, I will select one of the free lists. You can see I've already got one selected, and it says I've got two available for free in my plan, so I can select one more. So I wanna click subscribe on this one. It gives us some information, total IPs, uh, last changes, last updated 13 hours ago. I'm gonna add the SEC engine, and I'm gonna select our 1.5, that's the one I created with the new version, and then we can choose ban, capture, or custom. So I'm gonna choose ban, and it gives you more information about it. This will ban the IP referenced in the block list. And then you can go through the different options and see which one works for you. I'm gonna hit save, and now you can see it lists the security engines, the SEC engine, and my choice, in this case, it was ban as well. If I go back to the block list, lists of lists, you can see I have two, the one I had before and the one we just added. And you can see the free proxies list, I've put a capture, and this one that I just added, you can see I selected ban. So you can have different remediations for different lists. CrowdSec has a hub for collections, configurations, and bouncers. Let's browse the new collection introduced by the latest release and search for AWS console. This collection groups an AWS CloudTrail parser 
AWS brute force console detection scenario, AWS non-working hours and non-working day console login detection. And it gives you the commands to install the collection. The other collection I'd like to show you on the hub is AWS Sys Benchmark. It is made up of many parsers and scenarios. For example, AWS root account usage. It is not recommended to use the root account of any server or even your AWS account. So it'd be great to get an alert if and when this happens. And what I love is that you could configure the alert so it notifies you even on Slack. With version 1.5, you can add additional context to the alerts. But to find out what contexts are available, you need to use their CSCLI command. So these are the contexts that I showed, briefly showed you before. As I mentioned, we need to find out what contexts are available for our server. So we can use this command, CSCLI LAPI context detect dash dash all. And you can see we get a lot of results. I like the idea of adding target user. So to add the target user to our context and our alerts, we can use the command CSCLI LAPI context add the key, which is target user you saw from the list, and also the value, which in this case is event meta target underscore user. To list all the contexts you have previously added, you can use the command CSCLI LAPI context status. As you can see, we've got target user. And this is what we see appearing in our alerts table. We can see target user and the actual value of what happened on the server. Kubernetes is getting more and more popular, which means that more bad actors will attempt to exploit it. This makes it even more important to ensure that you are notified of any potential attacks. CrowdSec has introduced with this latest release a Kubernetes audit collection called K8 Audit which includes scenarios to detect security-related events, for example, exec into a pod, mounting a sensitive host folder, and anonymous access to the Kubernetes API. Now we've gone into this collection, we can get more information on it, notification examples, but also, more importantly, the command that you need to add on the terminal, so therefore it, it installs the collection. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see what is contained in this collection as well, and you can click on individual items to get more information. But note that most scenarios in this collection will not lead to a decision as they are mostly intended for notification purposes. If you're interested in getting early access to CrowdSec's beta features, you can do this now. You can run the command CSCLI config feature flags, and this will list the available beta features and their status. As you can see, I've already got one enabled. This is the polling API client, and these are the other ones that I'm able to add if I wish, and this list could change as they add more beta features. To enable a beta feature, you need to add it to the feature.yaml file, and this is in the path etc crowdsec. And so I can uh, cat that file that I've got, and you can see that Pappy client is in there, and that's why it's showing on the enable section of the list. But you can add multiple ones if you wish. If you're a web developer or you're in DevOps, the new features in CrowdSex version 1.5 are a game changer when it comes to protecting your code and infrastructure. In my opinion, every server should use CrowdSec, which would not only protect them, but also improve the community network as the information supplied by CrowdSec to protect your service is crowdsourced by you. So go and check out CrowdSec's latest version, which is out now. I have linked this in the description below. And while you're there, go star their repo as well.